Welcome to another Mathematics Visually Explained video. Today we are going to dive into the quick and fast calculation of sine without a calculator. What you learn can also be used as a reference of how to approximate any function with simple intuition. First, we are going to cover three segments of the sine function separately. 0 to 180 degrees, 180 to 360 degrees, and as an exercise, minus 180 to 0. Following that, we are going to look at the summary and our accuracy. As an ending, we introduce a few improvements to achieve a better accuracy. All it takes to approximate sine is a couple of intuitive ideas. Anchoring the function at 0 and 180 degrees where sine is 0. Normalizing at 90 degrees where sine is 1. Using functions we understand with properties to the original sine function we want to approximate. We need something which is symmetric and has a curvature like a parabola. Let's start drawing. We draw up our coordinate system first. We split the problem into three segments, starting with the first segment from 0 to 180 degrees. Let's draw the function we want to approximate first as a guideline. We derive all our calculation both in degrees and radians, so you can take either of them as a reference, but in some occasions we only use radians. Set up the anchors at 0 and 180 degrees, where sine is 0. We can easily come up with a function that satisfies our condition of turning 0 at 0 and 180 degrees. When alpha is 0, our term turns to 0. When alpha is 180, our parenthesis turns to 0. Let's visually observe our function, starting with our orange parabola. Flip the parabola by multiplying alpha square with minus 1 to resemble the shape of our original function. Shift it in position by introducing alpha times 180. Observe that by adding them together, we arrive at the green function. Now, we just need to normalize at 90 degrees to get 1. We just divide by the result of the function at 90 degrees, and that's our solution. Putting together the two, we arrive at our approximation function in blue. To approximate the other quadrants, we can use the same intuition. In red, our original function. Setting up the anchors at 180 and 360 degrees, where sine is 0. Simply building a function according to our criteria and anchors. We arrive at our green function again. Now let's normalize where our original function should take up 1. We divide by the resulting constant to arrive at our end result.
you can arrive at the same solution by simply using the periodicity of sine. We know that sine beta plus 180 degrees equals minus sine beta. Thus, alpha equals beta plus 180 degrees. Now solve for beta by substituting beta with alpha minus 180 degrees to our very first approximation between 0 and 180 degrees. After simplifying the equation, you can see we arrive at the same formula as before. As an exercise, let's finish with our minus 180 degrees to zero interval. We can see the results will be very close to our very first solution. The red curve is our original function, where minus 180 is our anchor point, which yields a close result to our first 0 to 180 degrees solution. By determining our normalization constant at minus 90 degrees, we can see the same normalizer as in our very first approximation solution, only with a negative sign. We divide with this normalizer to end up with our final solution. Again, as an alternative, we can use the periodicity of sine, knowing that sine minus alpha equals minus sine alpha, we just substitute minus alpha to our first function between 0 and 180, ending up with the same result we just calculated in our earlier approximation. Now let's take a look at our current accuracy. Here is our original function and the approximations we made. We can just measure the accuracy simply by the difference of expected value and approximated value. See the yellow plot. We can also zoom into the y-axis, just setting the range between 0 and 0 0.05, which is a 20 times zoom. Our error now will look a bit more pronounced. And we can see that our maximum error is 0 0.05 at 30 degrees. Sine 30 degrees is 0 0.5, but we approximated 0 0.55. If you could tag along, we show you how to fix it. Let's use another function called sine double tilde and add a couple of new variables to work with. Name them as you like. We used a and b. We need to make sure our anchors still hold. Sine 0 and 180 degrees should still be 0. As we can see, 
This still holds whenever sine tilde is zero at one and 180 degrees, which we made sure it is earlier. Our new sine double tilde is also zero. How about the normalization value at pi per two? When sine tilde takes 90 degrees or pi per two, we end up with a per one plus b equals one equation, which means a must equal one plus b. Now let's add an additional constraint. Sign at 30 degrees to keep our function at bay. We can substitute a with 1 plus b, and we already know that sine tilde of our original function at 30 degrees is 5 per 9 equals 0 0.55. So what remains is to solve for b. We multiply both sides by the denominators of our fractions and after by 9, which results in b equals minus one fifth. What remains is to build up our result by substituting the value of b into our equation. Thus ending up with a slightly more complicated approximation. By looking at the errors, we can see that slightly closer than our earlier simplified version. Now zooming in 1000 times reveals a slight fluctuation at the maximum point 14,000. We could derive the same formula by also using another trick. Let's start with our extra anchor at 30 degrees this time. We want our sine double tilde to yield 0 0.5 at 30 degrees. And we know our previous approximation yields 5 per 9. Define sine double tilde by sine tilde divided by an arbitrary function q, which must yield 10 per 9 at 30 degrees so that our fractions normalize to one half. That's our first anchor for sine double tilde and our Q function. But don't forget our base anchor. Sine double tilde must yield zero at zero and 180 degrees. After checking with our definition, where we made sure sine tilde yields zero at zero 180 degrees, we realize it's true, as zero divided by our new function q will always yield zero, without touching our newly introduced q function. How about normalization at pi per two or 90 degrees? Let's substitute into the definition of sine double tilde tilde. Since sine tilde yields 1, we need to make sure q also yields 1 at this point. 1 just can't set q to 1 
for this specific point. So let's introduce h taking up 0 at this point. Let's merge the constraints we gathered so far in our earlier three points to figure out the form of h. We have just shown that h at pi per 2 or 90 degrees must be 0. And we know that our main function is symmetric around 90 degrees. So a definition of h could be alpha minus pi per 2 squared divided by a scalar to end up at 1 per 9 originated by our first anchor. We could solve this for b, resulting in pi squared. Our end result could be built up from there. Starting with our initial definition of sine double tilde, adding our normalization function, and substituting our function variables with the values we determined earlier. Now we can also substitute the definition of sine tilde with the formula we determined in the very beginning of the video. After doing some simplification and cancellation of a few terms, we end up with the same end result as we achieved with the trick on the previous slide. The same formula and errors. That was another Mathematics Visually Explained video. Thank you for your attention. First, like and or leave us a comment.